Hey guys, welcome to the channel again. Wanted to make this video and this is why did I pick the Evo Star 6 inch uh, for my first 6 inch uh, Apple. Um, so let's start with before I got this guy, I actually had um, a 6 inch uh, Acromat, uh, the Antares version. And um, I used quite a few of them in the past. So I've probably owned uh, two, at least two Skywatcher 6 inch F8 Acromats. I own the two versions of the Antari 6 inch Acromat. And then uh, the first one I owned was in like a 99, I think. Celestron was first to come out about that year with a 6 inch F8 Acromat. So I got this guy, it's been about two and a half years. So I wanted to make a video, why did I pick that guy? So as far as, far as in Canada, um, there isn't uh, too many manufacturers, like maybe in the US and other uh, places. Like for instance, um, Mead does not make anything bigger than a 130 uh, Apple Chromatic. Um, so they don't make anything bigger. Celestron doesn't even make ED or Apple scopes at all. Really, all they're making is SETs and mounts and stuff like that. Uh, that's what they're con concentrating on. Um, Lunt, I think, had almost a duplicate type of thing as the Evo Star, uh, but I believe that was made by APM, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and APM makes also a decent six inch. Um, F8 refractor with a decent focuser, but they're in Germany. And so for me, I don't want to ship anything that far with the duties, taxes, customs, um, and exchange rate. It's just gonna be crazy. So really, I like to buy stuff that's my first choice is in the Canadian market. Uh, and sometimes it, maybe the American market, but it depends too, the exchange rate uh, the customs, the border, sometimes there is duties and taxes and then sometimes there isn't. It's, it's almost like a lottery. You never know when they're going to charge you. Uh, one time, for instance, I ordered a $50 eyepiece and the duties and customs were like $28. That's more than half. Uh, so sometimes it's just not worth it. Um, Anyway, uh, you know, so th this is your entry level. Uh, the only other two companies that I thought that I would check out is Explorer Scientific. They made a, well, at that time it was a, a, a six inch, I think a 152 millimeter, six inch F8. It was a carbon fiber uh, tube, which I didn't like. Um, and I believe it was triplet 51 uh, glass. And to tell you the truth, I haven't really owned too much Explorer Scientific. And the reason is, uh, I think, that um, what's really popular uh, here is like the Mead, Celestron, Skywatcher are the three big names that are uh, like available pretty much everywhere. The Orion basically is uh, made in the same factory as those three anyway. So really, uh, just to get the Orion name brand, you don't see it too much uh, selling in like the telescope uh, market here or the stores. Um, and the same with Explore Scientific. I mean, he came from, uh, Scott Roberts came from Mead, uh, was the vice president, and then he started up his own company. I can't remember if he got fired or uh, he just wanted to start his own company, whatever it was. Uh, you know, it's coming from the same factory, uh, I believe it's GSO or or whatever so it doesn't matter so really even explore scientific is the same product it's just a different name i mean i think their eyepieces are pretty good uh but i haven't really uh like i said because meet celestron and skywatcher is really the, the the big three names in in canada and explore scientific is basically the same just a different name as the same with orion there's really no need to you know, get something that's not really available here. But anyway, they did uh, sell it six inch F8. I didn't really like the carbon fiber uh, thing. Might be lighter, but I hear the um, the thermal, uh, the cool down uh, time is not so great with a type of tube. 
and also it's all it's like 25 percent more for a carbon fiber tube so for me i just want an aluminum tube i don't want to pay 25 30 percent more for carbon fiber so i like i let that one go so the only other one that came to mind was do i go something better than the evo star um, and i looked at the william optics now what's nice about the william optics is i like the three color I consider it to be a medium quality, like uh, range. It's much better than, than this. This is a doublet. Um, well, I, I don't. Even, no one knows what type of glass, and that's the one thing. As if you guys watch my videos, I say that I really hate is that you know because the Evo Star just came out about less than three years ago in Canada. Anyway, I think in the U.S. Uh, almost a year before that. And before that, it was called Black Diamond. The Black Diamond was available for about 10 years. And then before that was the Gold Pro version. And that was probably around for, I don't know, six to eight years, something like that. So anyway, so we're talking about like 20 years now that Skywatcher has claimed there's uh, 80, 100 millimeter, 120, all had, you know, they were very proud to say it had FPL 53 glass uh, doublet, you know what I mean, for 20 years type of thing. And then all of a sudden when this one came out and they changed the name to Evo Star, they will not tell you what the name is. So that's what I didn't like. I was really upset. I made a video about it. Some people don't understand. But, uh, it, you know, I just don't know why they changed. But anyway, regardless of that, it was either this guy, which is an entry level, Apple Chromatic 6 inch, or I was looking at the William Optics. Now, currently, I just took a look uh, quickly, and I don't see the 153 anymore. They had that model, and that was the one I was interested. So it was, it's a triplet 53 glass, uh, 6 inch F8. Now, it wasn't cheap at all. I think they discontinued it, and now it's only the 156 because I do not see it on any dealer here in Canada. Uh, so I'm thinking they discontinued the 153 to the 156. Now, I'm a little bit disappointed of William Optics, and I'll tell you why. I called them. I'm not 100% sure who I talked to because this was about two and a half years ago. And what I asked them is, could I get, because to me, they kind of are like almost like a mom and pop kind of um, manufacturer. They're not the big uh, mass produced factory one. So if you try to do something custom, um, those other name brands like Meet, Meet Celestra and Skywatcher, they're not going to do it for you. They just mass produce the stuff and you buy it. But anyway... William Optics is something like more of a mom and pop. They could customize it. So I thought, why don't I ask them? Because it's fairly expensive. Uh, last time I looked at the 153, it was like over 8,000. Now I just checked the 156 model and I believe it's 9,200 Canadian uh, before tax. So this version here, which is a triplet 53 F8, you know, all that thing with that 3.5 inch feather touch focuser it is, uh, I believe it's um, 9,300 Canadian. With tax, I just did the 13%, uh, it was $10,068. So we're talking big money. And the problem I have is spending, again, I consider William Optics to be a medium grade, much better than, you know, the mass produced stuff but not as top end as like this Takahashi. At $10,000 or over $10,000 just for the OTA, I'm thinking I can get something like this if I can find it used and I'll be, I would prefer that. Uh, it's a lot of money. But anyway, what I asked William Optic is, can they, instead of giving me the 3.5 feather touch focuser, because that model that they have is really for imaging. It's a, I believe it's a $1,200 focuser to $1,400, depends on the dealer and, and whatever, but it's $1,200 to $1,400 focuser. You can buy a damn, you know, telescope 
a good one for for that amount is that can they customize me because they make you know the 80 mil uh version uh the 103 the 126 they have a, several different version and under smaller ones they have a 2.5 inch um dual speed focuser for visual that's all i need and i'm sure a lot of people in my uh, boat uh or you know in my, in my place that's all they need why pay 12 to 1400 dollar focuser when it's really meant for imaging and i'm paying extra for something i don't need like for instance my mead triplet the mead 6000 triplet uh has a two and a half inch focuser i've never needed anything more uh, you know well the evo star that focuser sucks uh it's the same as all three models that you, they give you it's it's the most elementary focuser that you can get but again it's a two inch focuser i'm just saying if it was better quality but visual people don't really need anything more than the two inch focuser maybe a two and a half so I asked them, could they exchange it for me? And, you know, of course, they would just have to, have to give me a, an adapter plate. And the person there told me, uh, why do I need a triplet for visual? Go buy a doublet. Uh, and I thought, like, you know, I am serious in, in maybe getting it. Um, you know, I wasn't just beating around the bush, as you could tell by my telescopes. If I want something... Uh, I just didn't want to pay for something that I don't really need and it's not really suited for for my needs. And I thought, you know what, I want to buy a triplet because I want to get the best color, image quality. And it, it's not just the color, it's the contrast and image uh, that sometimes you get with a triplet. Uh, yes, it's heavier, whatever, has its ups and downs. But he told me, go buy a doublet. Why am I looking at his uh, triplet? So I said, okay, so I didn't buy it. So that's one lost sale. So I was very disappointed. In William Optics. But again, for me, um, a scope that's medium, what I would say medium quality with a huge focuser. My thinking is, and correct me if, if I'm wrong or if you don't agree with me, let me know in the comments. Should they have like an entry level a focuser, maybe like how the Evo Star. There's two versions on the six inch. One with the basic rings and the basic focuser, and then the more expensive one comes with heavy duty rings and a better focuser. Should William Optics have done something like that? So for the visual people that want their six inch triplet, you know, you just have more. I mean, their two and a half inch focuser is not basic. It's actually, I think, medium quality. For visual, you don't even need to upgrade that thing. Maybe if they've done that, they can knock, I'm just guessing, I don't know, 100%, maybe a thousand bucks, 800 bucks off the price. Um, the other thing is that I thought was, you know, a little weird that um, maybe it's just me, but it's just, you know, I'm thinking, why doesn't William Optics make a 150, like 150 millimeter refractor instead Two years ago it was 153, now it's 156. It's bigger, it's heavier. If they just made a 150, because you're talking about a triplet 53 lens is very expensive. That's the most expensive thing on that telescope. If they were to just to make a 150 millimeter, like the Takahashi, like the Evo Star, and a lot of other brands, they could probably save maybe another, you know, now you're talking six millimeters diameter. When you take that whole circumference of six millimeters, you probably can make, I would guess, like a free 73 mil William Optics free scope. Does that make sense? So if they just were to cut the blank uh, with that left over, they can probably make the 73, a free scope that they can sell which is almost, uh, I don't know, seven, eight hundred dollars, I believe, Canadian. So I just thought, you know, if they did those two things, the price could probably come down fifteen hundred to two thousand. Now that scope with tax is probably would be around eight thousand instead of ten thousand. Maybe they would sell a lot more. That's just my thoughts. What do you guys think? Anyway. After they told me just go look for a doublet, I figure, you know what, that's fine. If they don't want my business, 
I'll take it uh, somewhere else. So I figured for an entry level six inch Apple Chromatic, I'll try this guy here. I just got the basic version, which is still not cheap. Um, it's $3,200 Canadian with taxes, like $3,600. Um, and as you can see, after I did find, I made a couple of videos on the Takashi six inch, I found it used and I'm glad I didn't go the William Optics way because I actually got something that's 10 times better uh, as far as name brand quality, I think, for the same price as I would have paid for the William Optics. But anyway, that's the reason why I got this guy. As um, And as you can see, I have one, two, three, four, six inch. Uh, sorry, that one is a seven inch uh, Apple Chromatic. These three are six inch. Um, so I'm probably gonna sell two out of the three. I don't know which ones yet. I have to definitely test them out this year and uh, I'll probably end up keeping one. Anyway, um, that's it. Just wanted to tell you guys why I picked the Evo Star 6 inch, why I didn't pick the William Optics and the Explorer Scientific. Really, there's no other name brand that's available in Canada. And I thought you guys would like to know and uh, why I was kind of disappointed um, with the William Optics that, uh, you know, they couldn't change the focuser. If you look at a lot of their scopes, some of them, like the 156 millimeter, I'm sure you guys know if you've been in the hobby, there's two different prices for two different versions. One is with uh, their focuser, it's a 3.7 inch focuser. And then they also sell with the 3.5 feather touch focuser. So they do have a couple models that they change. I'm just saying, why not make one with a two and a half uh, inch focuser for just the visual people where that's more than enough. And that could probably knock almost a thousand bucks off that price there. Shrink the 156 to 150. That can probably, you know, shave another thousand bucks off the price. And it'll just be more attractive. Maybe. That's just me. I don't know if you guys agree or not, but this video is about why I chose this guy. I will uh, see you on my next video. Like, comment, and subscribe.